Tom Daly. Uh, he was uh, probably my biggest inspiration. Like I literally had a poster of, not of him like posing like that. <laughs> that would be weird. Um, getting weird now, that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, yeah, yeah. I do this a lot, but he was in like a little pipe shape. <laughs> Um, He's still going, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows this already, it's fine. Um, but yeah, and then, then now I've got, a fit, you know, I've got a photo of me and him together now, with a gold medal, which is quite a cool little, I guess, story. When and why did you decide to become an athlete? I didn't really enjoy primary school too much. I wasn't very, like, I, my education wasn't great. I mean, it was, it was a good place where I went to, but I just wasn't that smart. Um, and I was quite energetic as a kid, and I think my parents just wanted to put me in. Like, I remember doing all sorts. I remember doing gymnastics, diving, uh, Aikido. Yeah, I think I just didn't really enjoy sitting down in a chair and doing, I don't know, writing or maths or English or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I think that's the main reason why I became, I guess, an athlete. I can connect to that as well. Like I struggle with theory and academia. And when mm. I was at school, I found it very hard to concentrate. I was sort of a fidgeting <laughs> or sitting, you're know, moving around. And because of the bullying and things like that, and I wasn't very good with hand and eye coordinated sports, I found cycling and swimming. And that's how I got involved to become an athlete. And I wanted to do something where I had a purpose in life. And it's seen as Kira rather than Kira being naughty or not paying attention or seen as yes you have a disability so you can't do anything in life. I mean I'm lucky I guess that I had a mum who chose cycling as a form of losing weight because I wasn't really that good at other sports as such but she happened to choose cycling and that happened to be the one that I was good at. Yeah I was like that because I was I don't ever feel like I kind of seeked out sport probably similar to yourself but I just tried a 60 meter sprint one day um, I don't know if you were the same and just somebody told me that you might be quite good at it oh. so yeah we just um, took it seriously started training and that was that. I think I was just I was just like a sporty kid like I was like I walked at seven months um, and I feel like my mum was like just get her doing something so I was like a dancer I was a gymnast I played football I played hockey eventually I found cycling which wasn't by choice <laughs> that was more like a that was when I was getting back from my stroke like I just got onto a bike because I couldn't run um, and then someone was like oh you're kind of good at this like let's do some testing and yeah that was that yeah when I, I, I realized when uh, I could represent uh, Great Britain at a World Games and, and and that's that's the moment when I when I knew uh, uh, yeah, would to become an athlete and it gave me something to work towards as well. What was the journey like from starting in sport for you to going on to represent your country? It was one of those situations and I don't know if you can all relate but when you're younger in sport it's almost like naivety you don't realize what you're doing and it's not until you get older as an athlete that the pressure starts to come and you start to realize where you actually are and that you have taken it to quite an elite level you know 19 year old Johnny at 2012 had no clue where he was. He didn't ever realise that he was at a Paralympic Games. He didn't realise that there was this pressure. There was this elitism. I just kind of loved sprinting, you know, had some blocks and, and ran. The seriousness kind of came later almost. It was the enjoyment that brought me, brought me to it first. And that makes sense, you know, when you're starting off, it's an interesting and fun experience, that excitement, the nerves are going because you hope that all the training and everything and that effort and the support around you, you really hope that it pays off and you end up getting that goal that you want. And when I first started at cycling, I couldn't ride a bike at the age of 12. I couldn't handle the brakes, the bike, the gears, the balance, everything that was asked. So I kind of went away from that. And then I so happened to go to the velodrome where there's no brakes, <laughs> sounds scary. And then that's how I learned how to ride the bike and other people, they start the other way around. Do you find that there is um, like a, a point in, a, in your career, it goes from like fun and passion to like almost, obviously it's always, not always fun, but does it get to a point where it's like, this is like tough, like, you know, it's a grind every day and it's like, kind of like, it's not as fun as it used to be. Yeah, I mean, I definitely had that, like in between 2012 and 2016. 2012 definitely changed my life. Like there was no two ways about it. Just the media attention, 
like even just being in the public, all of a sudden people knew who I was. And so it was very different. And so the build up for 2016 was so different. And like there was a good, I'd say 18 months post 2012 where I'd achieved everything that I ever wanted to. And at the time I couldn't imagine anything better. I like everything, like as cliche as it is, it was like, yeah, your dreams have come true. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what next? Like I haven't got anything else to win. Like I've won it now. And so, yeah, I spent like 18 months just, I guess, working out like how I sort of saw my career going from that point onwards. But I would say that post Olympics bit, I really struggled with. Yeah, that's how I felt after Tokyo. Like I was like, oh bloody hell, I've done it. Like I've my first one, like Tom, like Tom hated it. Cause he would always say to me, he's like, I've been trying, this is my fourth Olympics, oh. you know, I've been trying and he would, but in a nice way. He wasn't making yeah. me feel like an idiot. He was like, you've just, yeah, 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 yeah. You've just done on your first one. Great. Uh, which, is, yeah, which is quite funny for me. But um, yeah, so obviously after, after the Olympics went, went on, I'm a celeb as well with Kadena and like, I don't know, my life felt very different all of a sudden um, and it was great and I loved it. And then the big drop off and that, ha that didn't happen to me after, like, outside the post Olympic depression. Like, it didn't happen to me after the games, it happened to me after I'm a celeb because I remember getting, well, leaving the show and then the next day I was back in, back in London training and I was just like, I don't really enjoy this. Like <laughs> everything felt like, because everything was so heightened before, now everything just felt really dull, boring, nothing actually excited me in like training as well. Like I really didn't enjoy it. And then when you've had a, I don't know, when you've had a taste and a, for the, the fun, like celebrity stuff. It's like, well, I said, you know, <laughs> love that. Um, you know, uh, but, um, you love Diamond Celeb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then eventually, you know, and that sort of stuff stops and you're like, oh, like, and I felt like people kind of almost forgot. You know, I think every four years it's like, whew, like these people are amazing. And then, like, in between, as you were saying, like the in between period is like the toughest part. And obviously, we're kind of in that point now. And I feel like, now we are kind of coming up to Paris and hopefully things kind of get a bit more fun again. You guys kind of kept kind of showing it with your hands as well, is that everything's easy on the rise. You know what I mean? Once you're kind of climbing the, the mountain, it's all fun. And then once you get to the top of the mountain, you love it. And then literally it is, it's like day after the Olympics, day even when any setbacks, you're kind of going down, yeah. <laughs> and you realise that, yeah, and nothing kind of comes like, and you guys obviously like straight into I'm a celeb, like these are big things that you've got, you've got these huge focuses. So you're literally almost going up and up and up and then your brain's just got nothing. Like, do you guys get that as well? I didn't uh, really have, uh, have one, but I, I just don't uh, have fun really, yeah. It's difficult to have that bounce back. So in 2015, I didn't really know, you know, I was, 17 going off to hopefully get some medals and then next four years okay now we know who you are so now we know what you can do and then i guess that is that trying to balance people's expectations yeah i'm the same like i think you've all said it like when you go from essentially being a no one and then like overnight everyone knows who you are um because i went to i'd only just started really in like disabled or paralympic sport um in 2015 so i went to 2016 as like you know, this kid that's just going to rock up and do some sport and then it goes well and you're like, oh, this is cool. And then, you know, you come out and like, oh, go and do this TV show, go to this award show, go on this red carpet. And it's like, wow, this is really cool. And I was literally just like, I don't know, I felt like my head was literally just like this. And I was like enjoying like every moment. And I was like, this is really cool. Like, you know, you, you want the red carpet with all these like amazing people. And it is really hard to like, you know, bounce back. And I think it was mentioned earlier, I was the same, um, I guess, as you, you know, coming from, you know, that high of being good. And then, you know, 2020 or 2021, everyone has this expectation that Kadena is going to go and, you know, compete really well. And I found that really hard. Like it was quite nice going into 2016 as a nobody because there's no expectations. But then 2021, everyone's like, oh, she's going to go and do this. You know, you do TV adverts um, people just know your face. And then it's like, oh, gosh. The pressure and I really felt the pressure and I was injured before and I spent pretty much every athletic session just crying and I guess you know how hard it is when you've when you've got an athletics injury like you get on the bike so that was fine I was really good on the bike but I just couldn't run so I was just crying like day in day out 
um, just because I felt like I was going to let everyone down and let myself down. And then you go to the games and it goes all right and you're like, okay, I'm back. <laughs> and then you have to come down off that cliff again. It's a bit of a, it's a roller coaster of four years because it's just frustratingly, like a lot of people just see us as people that go to the Olympics and Paralympics and in between, you know, we're, we just do nothing. We're just sat having a coffee. <laughs> What's the best part of being an athlete? I think my proudest moment of uh, being an athlete isn't necessarily winning, winning the gold at Tokyo. I think... Um, like I remember when I was younger, like when I was when I first started diving, I was like seven years old, and like whenever the older divers, like the good divers, ever made time for me, you know, they didn't just like ignore me as I was walking by, like hello, sort of thing. <laughs> like they would actually be like, oh hello, like you know, take the time out of their day to, like, and I, I looked up to them, and like weirdly, I looked up to Tom, even though he was like still young, like I was literally a fan of of his, and he always was really nice, and then it's just weird how it all turned out eventually, but. Um, yeah, I think whenever like the little little divers just like I don't know, like you just look up to you and just think, like whenever you see their smile, whenever you say hello to them, I, 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 it's that's when I'm most proud. It's because it's like, you know, they, they they think you are like some rock star, and I just like I love kind of inspiring the younger the younger generation. I guess that's my proudest kind of. Obviously, winning the gold was, was very good. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I had this conversation the other day. It's quite funny just listening to that because, like, I still have, I don't know if you guys have, I have, like, imposter syndrome. So, like, I'm at the track at Leicester sometimes, and I, it's a track that I go to kind of on my own sometimes when I need to just kind of focus on myself. But sometimes if the club's there, I feel like people stare. And a lot of the time, I literally, I almost feel like they're trying to stare at me, like, what are you doing here? Like that. And I'm sitting there like, why are these people staring at me like that? Like, and it's like, should I, am I in your way? So I'm always trying to like move out the way and stuff. And it wasn't until the other day, because my girlfriend gets her nails done by someone whose basically boyfriend goes to the track. And they're like, oh yeah, he was there the other day. And I saw him and I didn't want to go up to him. And I was like, is that why people obviously are looking at me? But I'm like thinking that they're just like staring me down. I kind of don't see myself in that light a lot of time. It's like, I automatically probably see it as like, I'm just this guy who's in the way, right? It's just, I don't know if any of you kind of feel like, it's like that imposter syndrome type thing. I don't know if you ever, any of you guys have moments like that? Yeah, I'm a bit like that. I feel like you'll speak to someone like, for instance, like, you know, like a doctor and I'm like, you say to do something that's like well better than me. <laughs> like, but I do love it when, you know, like you get like kids coming up to you and they're like, and I'm like, actually, I've got an opportunity here like to be able to like impact their life. I've got um, a couple of kids that I help support at the moment and, seeing them come onto the GB team is like the best thing ever. And I'm, like, I literally, I was on the track yesterday and one of my riders was on there and I just, I was like riding around just so proud. Like, it's cool what we do, but like what we can do outside of that is like so much bigger. And that's what I find like, is what makes me proud of what I've done, if that makes sense. I mean, for me, I'm like experiencing it firsthand, I think a bit like, because obviously Albie, my little boy is five. And um, it's funny because like, when I look back, I just think, sport has literally given me everything like British cycling has pretty much given me everything like I'm a product of the system but obviously from that I've got a husband <laughs> uh, my sister works for them um I I feel like they're a second family to me like they've been incredible and obviously now I've got Albie and he goes to me the other day and now this is a five-year-old right and he's like Mummy, when can I have a bike with skinny wheels? And I'm like, skinny wheels? Like, and it didn't even occur to me that obviously he's looking at a road bike or a track bike all the time thinking, well, I don't want this mountain bike. Like, I want what they've got. Like, that makes me so proud that he's looking at what mummy and daddy do. And he's like, oh, I want to do that. And like, I would never push him down the cycling route. Well, it's not that I wouldn't. It's just he's always going to have that expectation of being Laura and Jason's son. But for just the fact that he's gone wow, like what they do is really fun. Can I do that? Just makes me sit there and go, oh, like that's an achievement in itself, really. He has got like, pretty cool parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's always got the pressure, yeah. isn't he? That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, <laughs> like I can hear the commentator now. My, my, my proudest moments were representing my country in basketball and, and winning a gold medal. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What made you change to cycling? Because oh. you've already got a gold medal in basketball. Yeah, um, a different ex experience of in a in a new sport and have a, and and also have a chance of going to another World Games as well. Which one's harder? Um, 
Good answer. <laughs> Once you've started on a journey and you've succeeded in winning a gold medal, what, what's that like? What's the emotion like? For me, I'm like, I literally spend day in, day out, you know, working to run, you know, 60 seconds or cycle 35 seconds, which is actually nothing. But like you do all that hard work and in that moment, it's like, oh, like I've literally done it. But it's like such a short period of time that you're just like, it's kind of over. I get that. I do get that. And I guess you always want that moment to lengthen. And I guess for me, it was when I was given the medal around my neck, but also when I go into schools and I talk to the children about having a dream and if you've got a goal, you can achieve it and don't let anybody tell you any different. And for some children, they need that reminder of you are amazing, you are fabulous, you can succeed, even if you have barriers that unfortunately are put in your way. And when they say to me, oh, Carol, look at your medals, they look fabulous. I go, what do you want to see one? Do you want to hold them? They go, yeah. They could just see it all over the face. And I think it's that moment of, wow, I've met somebody who's like me and who understands me and I'm not alone anymore, you know? I feel like the medals are more for like other people than they are for like me. Like you, you have that moment, obviously you win the medal, but I feel like, it, yeah, it's them for like other people. Does anyone else like get that? <laughs> Although yeah. if they got stolen, I'd be very upset. Yeah, sure. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you've just reminded me to maybe check my drawer because I haven't actually looked at it for like a year or something at least. It's like, is it still going to be there? Yeah. yeah, I feel like they, they do kind of just get pick up dust on the side or in a drawer. Like, it's weird. Like, my, mine is, I do place it like pretty much straight in my living room. But that's the only, like, I live in London, but my family all live in Leeds. And like my, in Leeds, I've got like a big cabinet of all my, all my like, important medals. Uh, but the, uh, my mum and dad used to hate it, but I, the, the gold medal is the only one I have with me. That's obviously going to be wherever I am. Yeah, it's the important one. But I remember the feeling of when me and Tom found out, I felt this like superhuman power where I like hugged Tom and like picked him up and he felt as light as a feather. Um, and then I remember falling to the ground um, and I, it was like, I wasn't crying because no, no tears was coming from my eyes, but you know, like the, you know, the kind of how you breathe when you cry. It was like that, but it just felt like a, a release of all like all the pressure over the years and all the hard work. And then I remember at the back of the podium crying properly because I remember thinking my all my family, my friends are all in like my garden in Leeds. Actually, I didn't know they were there, but I just knew that they were obviously watching at home. And I was like, yeah, like I've done them proud. <laughs> it, it was uh, La Los Angeles and I enjoyed, enjoyed it. It made me... Uh, I feel uh, pr proud and honoured and, and just, just, just being there was, uh, was, yeah, it was just amazing. And sharing the, the, the moment as well, um, in, yeah, because it was uh, in basketball, just enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously 2012 for me didn't come easy because there's no Olympic medal as easy as it, but I was a kid, I was 20, I was young for a cyclist, no one knew who I was and I just sort of fell at it. And then you go, you win. But then it changed for me in terms of expectation. And for me, the biggest thing was, and like no pressure, mm. I didn't want to be a one hit wonder. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to prove <laughs> that I could come back and do it. It wasn't a fluke, I didn't fluke it. Like I went there, I was at my very best at the time. And I wanted to prove that I could get back to that. And that was what motivated me for those next four years. Saying you didn't want to be a one hit one does one thing. Going out and trying to do it all over again like was a complete other thing. Um, and all while now being under the spotlight because obviously people then did know who I was. So it was just a very different experience. Um, but then between 2016 and Tokyo, Obviously, I'd had Albie by this point, but like my whole thing with that was I hadn't sacrificed all this time with my little boy to not go and achieve the end goal. And when I look back, would the sacrifice of leaving Albie at home all this time, not even at home because he traveled the world with us, but just like the sacrifice of the training sessions and the training camps, would it have been worth it if we hadn't have won? Like, honestly, I don't know, like because that little boy is like my everything, like he's my world. And so it had to be worth it at the end. And the sacrifices that you have to make 
that not everybody gets. Unless you're an athlete, they don't get it. You know, it's early starts, late nights, making sure that you're eating the correct foods that you've been suggested to eat, making sure that you're having enough rest. And it's also applying yourself in those situations where sometimes you might be thinking, what's the point? It's not going to benefit me. For me, you kind of put there what I actually think is the hardest thing about being an athlete, which is that I don't, for me at least, I don't look at my day as the hard work. I actually love going and training. It's not that hard for me. I feel like genuinely someone said to me, sit down behind this computer and work for 10 hours. That would be 10 times worse than going and being sick at a lactic <laughs> session. No. But going home and not having the ability to switch off, I think that for me is what I think actually is the hardest part about that sacrifice of being an athlete. Everyone always assumes it's the really gritty hard work, which I think some people do struggle with, but it is that. It's every night going, I've got to go to bed. I've got to make sure that I get enough sleep. I can't eat this food in case it inflames me. I can't go to this event because I'm going to sit down and drive, you know, for, for, for six hours. And it's weird, I don't know, when you say it like that, it just it makes me recognise that at least from everyone else's perspective, it's like they sometimes think the hard work's a really hard work. But I don't know, do you guys feel like that? I feel like that's actually the easiest part of, our, of my job at least, yeah. Oh, it's 24-7, isn't it? Mm. Like, being an athlete is 24-7. Who's inspired you in your career? Do you know, I used to be really inspired by um, an athlete called Alison Felix, who, I just think she's great. Like, she just runs so elegantly. She can do the 100, the 200, the 400, and be great at all of them. And then, like, she does, like, loads of great advocacy. I used to think she was great. My real kind of yeah, like hero, whatever, growing up, I guess, was actually Victoria Pendleton. Because as cyclists, it's not like football, is it? Like mm. the, 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 when Albie watches football, he's watching, he thinks that they're behind a screen. Like he doesn't, he doesn't associate them as being people as such because they're massively famous and you can't go and train with them. Whereas Vicky, for me, she was at all these bike races. Like her dad used to set up these grass track events, which we used to go to. And so it, as much as she was an idol, she was also a person that you could go and speak to and she would help you. So it was just a very, yeah, I'd say like we're lucky, I guess, in that, in that sense that these idols, you can actually go and speak to and meet and they're approachable. For me, uh, for me, no, I, I had to uh, met, met, met my own path as, as, as there aren't many uh, famous people with an, an intellectual disability. Because there was no one um, yeah. to like look up to. Like your mission, I'm guessing, is to be that for someone else. Yeah. Like you are paving the way, which I think yeah. is, is really good, really helpful. Yeah, exactly, yeah. My first inspiration in diving was uh, a diver called Greg Luganis. And then eventually, like, well, quickly it became Tom, Tom Daly. Uh, he was, uh, probably my biggest inspiration. And I remember, you know, watching Tom at the uh, 2008 Olympics um, and thinking like, bloody hell, like he's done it at 14. Okay. Like, that's kind of <laughs> crazy. Um, so I remember going on my first uh, competition. Like we all go to a competition as a team. And uh, Tom, Tom was on the team, it was 2012. Um, it was my first ever junior, junior world championships. And he was on it. And so was, I think like four other uh, Olympians as well so I was like this is crazy like this is I was like the youngest you could be and I like I remember he um he retweeted my tweet I was sat there with my dad at home like refreshing my my Twitter profile <laughs> was, like, I was just getting loads of followers like I think I, I reached a thousand followers and back then I remember thinking like oh my god this is so cool <laughs> um and yeah that was like the first time I ever like properly like you know went on a team with with Tom and it was it was it was funny and obviously I, I, le I remember asking him for like signed photos, even though I was on a team with him, he probably thought I was a loser. Um, <laughs> uh, but he was super nice. And then, you know, now we're our Olympic gold medalist together, which is actually like a, I don't know, it's really cool for me because like going from one, like I literally had a poster of, not of him like posing like that. <laughs> that would be weird. Um, getting weird now, that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, yeah, yeah. I do this a lot, but he was in like a little pipe shape. Um, He's still going, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he knows this already. It's fine, um, <laughs> but yeah. And then, then now I've got a fit, you know I've got a photo of me and him together now with a gold medal, which is quite a cool little, I guess, story. Who, who do you think has been the most influential on you in your career? 
Uh, it's, it's probably, I'm sure you guys will probably say similar things, but the most influential person has to be my coach, uh, Dan Paff, uh, who I moved to in 2012. And there's, there's not been, I don't think, one person who's probably had as much of an impact on my career as him. I think well, I wouldn't, I, I'd say I would not have won London 2012 if it, if it wasn't for him. I think I'm going to say exactly the same thing. Like, my coach was literally, like, he was just that guy. Like, I remember actually when I first joined him, um, so he was, he was called Brian, but I used to call him Mr. Scobie. And I was like terrified of him. <laughs> like, I was so scared of him. But like eventually, like we just ended up with like this real like, I, I used to call him granddad and he used to hate it. Like, um, but we, he just was like this real fatherly figure like in my life. Um, he'd like, my mum used to love him cause like he'd take me to competitions. Like he'd, you know, make sure I got home. And I literally just like loved this guy. There'd be times I had absolute meltdowns. I'd just be crying and me and my training partner would have had a massive argument and I'm just sat there crying 100% in the wrong. But <laughs> Brian would come up and be like, all right, you know, let's go for an ice cream or something. And he just was like a great guy. I mean, he also coached me really well. I'm forgetting all that the important stuff, but like he just like every year, like I just got better and better and better. And then in 2014, when I get, got ill, um, there's actually a really cute video of like, me doing like a drill session and like my arm doing like I have like annoying spasms and like my arm was doing something weird and he just kind of grabbed it and he was like rubbing it and he was like is this what we've got now and I was just like yeah and he was like okay let's crack on he then took me from you know being this able-bodied athlete to being this not so great person with this disability that I was trying to like get my head around um and he then reinvented me as like a new athlete mum 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 and dad they, they, they put I can continuously put push me to keep keep going every day, and and uh, my coaches, they 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 really um, uh, put push me, and 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 it's it's that that keep keeps me going. Yeah. Is there anything you you currently do outside of sport? that you'd like to do more of? Uh, I, I, I do uh, 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 draw, drawings of, uh, of sports stadiums. I do that um, as, as, a, uh, um, as well as cycling. And it's a, so, a social a, a enterprise of, of Special Olympics um, called um, that now guy, yeah. For me, obviously, I have a little boy already. I have another one coming, <laughs> so I feel like my life... And actually, I never sit still, so it all is a bit carnage. I've basically just set up a petting farm at my house. Um, so I've got alpacas, sheep, chickens, rabbits, you name it, I've got a lot. Oh, wow. So that's going to take up plenty of my time. Um, <laughs> but also, yeah, I mean... Obviously, we don't know when our careers are going to end, do we? But um, I've never had any sort of other career path as such in terms of I've never thought, oh, when I've finished, I'll be an accountant or whatever. Like, I started cycling from such a young age. I never really got into anything else as such. For me, it's maybe about helping that next generation, like probably like the 14 year olds you know 14 16 year olds um and getting more of them somehow i don't know how but getting more of them riding bikes and getting them into you know the junior ranks um bringing more athletes through because i just think it's such a shame for a sport that i love so much it seems that we're getting less riders coming through currently so yeah just doing something to give back i guess to british cycling because they are well, cycling as a whole, but British cycling has given me so much that I kind of want to give back to them without being a coach. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not being that athlete. I mean, Jason's done it and it's stressful. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I get like the, the giving back thing. I set up um, a cycling academy to get more people from a black and ethnic minority in cycling. Like, I feel like, you know, it's cycling like it's very white, middle class, male predominantly. Um, it's nice when we've actually got a few female coaches in there. Um, but after uh, kind of, I've always wanted to do something like that because I would have never got into cycling had I've not fallen into it. Um, Cause I just didn't see myself as a cyclist. So I've, I'm working at the moment to try to get more people from those backgrounds into cycling. 
um, just to yeah give back that little bit. Uh, yeah, do you know what? your your farm basically sounds like the dream. Yeah, I'm coming to visit. That's yeah. my dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You like. can walk the alpacas. Yeah. It's quite fun. But I'm scared that I won't eat meat afterwards. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, I don't yeah, eat yeah, as yeah. much meat, so it's like well, the chickens are Jasons. Yeah, I don't know if I would. I would I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd struggle for like lack of protein. You don't need it if you're not an athlete, so I might get away with it. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to like have so many animals and rescue, and that is that's definitely been a dream for a long time. What advice would you give to any um, aspiring athlete or athlete at the beginning of their career? Go for it. Take every opportunity that comes to you with both hands and if you can find the support that suits you, fabulous. If not, then find somebody who will know the answer and if they don't know, I'm sure they will know somebody who will know the answer. Now, what do you think? Give, give, give it a, 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 any sport a go and um, ha, have it try and don't, don't give up on that journey as well. I would definitely say the same, like try absolutely any sport. I think there's, you don't know what you're good at until you fall upon it. And unless you try, you just don't know. Also, don't be scared to ask questions. Like I've always been a person just to question everything basically like there's not if I think something I'd rather ask it and look like an idiot than not ask it at all because I just think well it, I'm either going to get information or I'm not and I'd rather risk you know maybe asking a silly question than not than, than maybe get information that I actually need and will take further in my career. I would say just <clears throat> simply enjoy the ride because um, we're so like all of us we're so lucky to almost well, be the best in our sport. And for me personally, I don't think I've ever taken enough time to actually kind of realize what I've done. And also in the, in the moments as well, to actually think, oh, hang on a minute. This is actually well good. Like I'm enjoying it sort of thing. So just kind of remembering, you know, what you're doing, how lucky you are and just enjoying it. Enjoyment's always been the biggest thing. I think I, I agree with you so much there, I think. You've got to be quite dedicated to be obviously an elite sports person. And I think for me, the biggest thing that's helped with that is, is it, it's been fun. I love what I do every day. You know, I love going to training. So all the little kids out there, I remember like, you know, when you're at the track and you, you see some parents that are maybe pushing their kids towards the sport, should we say, <laughs> and you hear how they talk to their kids and stuff. And these kids are not enjoying training. And you're just like, please, like that kid's never going to be like, they're never going to be able to take it to the elite level. So it's just, remember what you're doing and remember it's 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 fun yeah the Champions League final comes around at that point you're playing Spurs how confident were you going into that? I, I, we knew, 100% we knew, like there was no way that they beat us. There, there was no way. We knew we were the much better team. 